I also want to record my appreciation for the assignment I was given yesterday to champion the reform of our great institution, the Africa Union, and all our institutions therein. And I want to also record my appreciation of President Kagame's huge contribution over the last eight years in championing that reform and the report that was filed yesterday. We have also managed to change the conversation and position the reform of the international financial architecture appropriately. Initially, it didn't look or it looked like it was a contest between the North and the South. But today, both the North and the South are united in affirming that there is a problem with the international financial architecture. And that today we are agreed that there is need for reform. We recognize these institutions, namely the African Bank, Trade and Development Bank, Africa Finance Corporation, Africa Reinsurance Corporation, Africa Trade and Investment Development Insurance, and Shelter Afrique as agencies of this institution of AU significantly to put a badge of approval or a stamp of approval on these institutions as African institutions that will support our own growth using our own institutions. As African countries, we dedicate 30% of our own reserves that currently are, New are in New York or Paris or London, earning negative interest, that we make 30% of those reserves available for these institutions, for us to build the capacity for these institutions to support our own development and progress. We also undertake to fashion an African Economic Summit and invite friends, countries that want to work with us, corporations that want to work with us, philanthropies that want to work with us, yearly for a summit that is much more cost effective and we don't have to go to all manner of capitals invited to try and discuss our development. It is fair, it is better if we can discuss it here at home, fashioned in the way we think best it should be. There was an overwhelming endorsement of the work that has been done by President Kagame and his team, including the chair of uh, Mohamed Faki of AUC, and also Professor Mkoko and their teams. This will give us an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to make a fit for purpose organization for ourselves so that we can drive the interests of our organization and our continent appropriately. We have now fora globally at the G20 and elsewhere to prosecute our interests. A fit for purpose AU will make our interests better articulated. And I am very confident that with the support of colleagues here, with the support of Africa Union, we can drive the implementation of the report. That there is an attempt to try and record that it is much more expensive to unlock our green energy potential. Empirical evidence demonstrate that while it may cost more initially, it is cheaper eventually. So we must package real, tangible, bankable projects, green energy projects in our continent as a demonstration of the potential we have and the opportunities that exist and the investment possibilities
that are necessary in our that are available in our in our continent we today are very proud that Africa is no longer the continent that was viewed just as a mere victim of climate change that today we are repositioning Africa as the continent that has the largest potential of renewable energy and that we can use this potential transform it into opportunity and change it into investment that will give not just an Africa green industrialization trajectory, but it will also create opportunities for employment, opportunities for industrialization that will eventually create enough jobs and stop our young people from migrating using rickety instruments in dangerous voyages to the rest of the world. We have put very clear proposals on the table about tenure of debt, grace period for any debt, and even including debt pause clauses in agreements that will give countries opportunity to manage their challenges of climate uh, vagaries, whether it is drought, whether it is um, uh, floods, and be able to still manage their debt situations. And number two, we have also agreed that there must be principles of responsible sovereign lending and that we need to have a candid conversation on credit rating, making sure that we eliminate disparities in credit rating of countries. Number two, that we eliminate disparities in risk analysis and the unfair profiling of African countries and countries in the global south and low-income countries as risky destinations. Empirical evidence